Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Matt, welcome to the Sin Bin, and why don't we talk a little bit about the Montreal Canadiens. So, I really wanted to make a video exploring the line combinations, giving my projected lineups, what I expect to see from each individual player, and I wanted to talk about the team as a whole, if they're going to make the playoffs, if they're not going to make the playoffs, how many points do I think they're going to get, uh, that type of stuff. I know what you guys are thinking, it's still a little bit early to be doing projections at this point. The offseason isn't over yet. Mark Bergman can still make a move. In my opinion, if there was a move to be done, you would have seen it already at the trade, at the, my apologies, on July 1st. I think that if there's a major move, it would have happened, and I don't expect one to be done. But hey, who knows? If Mark Bergman does make a major move, I'll be pleased to make another video about that. But for now, why don't we get into the projected lineups? Why don't we? So, first off, Let's explore the forwards. And the forward line number one will be centered by Max Domi. And on the left wing, he'll have Jonathan Drouin. And on the right wing, he'll have Nick Suzuki. So before I get into the wingers, let me just talk about Max Domi a little bit. When he first got acquired by Montreal, I wasn't too, too happy about the trade. I mean, I was really high on Alex Galchenyuk. But after that first year... I think I can admit I'm wrong, and I think a lot of fans can admit they're wrong. I was nothing but pleased with Max Domi, but the reason I'm bringing it up is because Max Domi, I always saw him as a left wing when he was with Arizona. I always saw, saw him as a winger. So when he came to Montreal and thrived as a centerman, I don't see why that can't carry through into the next season. So Domi will be centering the first line, and he got 72 points last season. I expect in that same range... Maybe a little bit better, to be honest. Uh, he's still very young. He's still developing. I don't see why he can't improve upon that. So that's what I got to say about Max Domi. Next, Jonathan Druen. I like this player. Don't get me wrong. But contrary to the Galchenyuk Domi trade, I think that the Sergachev Druen trade, I think that the Canadians organization are regretting it because the team is just starving. For a left-handed defenseman to play with Weber. You'll see that later when we get into the projected defense lineups. But the thing about Jonathan Drouin is that he's kind of one of those players that he doesn't work the hardest all the time. He's not very consistent. And I know that points total, he got it in the 50s. It's not bad by any means, but he got a lot of those points early on in the season. And when the Canadians were trying to make a push for the playoffs, when they really needed his offensive productions... He was nowhere to be found. And the thing about these players is that they're never going to change. Jonathan Druin is always going to be Jonathan Druin. And this lack of consistency will carry through into the next season. But that being said, I don't see why he can't get between 50 and 60 points. Maybe if it's a great year, he'll have 60 points. But when it comes to Jonathan Druin, it's just the work ethic. I want to see him have great work ethic. I want to see him, you know, work hard, go into the dirty areas. Uh, you know, that type of stuff. So that's it about Jonathan Druin. Next, uh, Brian Suzuki. Brian Suzuki, good lord. Nick Suzuki. Um, I don't know if he's going to make the team, so it's really risky making him play wing on the first line. But the thing about Nick Suzuki is that he's paid his dues in junior. You know, he, he played a lot of games. He excelled. He got over a 100-point season. I don't think he's going to develop furthermore if he plays in junior. He's just too good. And, you know, I don't think he's going to develop really much if he plays in the AHL either. I would like to see Nick Suzuki with the big club, and I expect him to have a big training camp. And he's going to make the team. And hopefully, if my projection is correct, he's going to develop chemistry with Domi and Druen. Those are two very fast players. He doesn't quite have the, uh, the foot speed to keep up with them, but... He does have the intelligence. He does have the hockey sense. So I know it's really risky, but Nick Suzuki will be playing with Domi and Druin. He's usually a centerman, but given the depth of center on the Canadians, wow, who thought I'd be saying that about the Montreal Canadiens? Giving their depth at center, he's going to indeed play right wing. Why don't we move on to our second line? And, you know, it's pretty uh, etched in stone here. The Deno tatar gallagher line. They worked marvels last season. I don't see why in hell Claude Julien would separate these three guys. Deno is very underrated. He's a great two-way centerman. He got a lot of Selkie votes. And um, Gallagher, he's just the good old Gallagher. You know what to expect from him. He's quite the opposite of Jonathan Drouin, where Gallagher is very consistent. He'll work hard every shift, every night. 
he's by all means for me the team captain and Tatar he just completes that line and he you know he has a rugged playing style but he can put the puck in the net so the Dino, Tatar and Gallagher line will stay intact next up we got Kokanyemi, Armia and Byron when I first started this projected lineup this third line I actually had Lekkinen playing wing left wing instead of Byron because just I wanted a whole finish line but I think that Byron is miles away from Lekkinen in terms of production, in terms of what he brings to the team. And there's no way in hell I was going to put Byron on the fourth line. So Byron will be playing on the third line with Coach Kinyemi. Coach Kinyemi had an okay rookie season. I'm not going to fool myself and think that it was amazing. He did fine. Uh, he's still very, very young. And I expect quite a boost in production. Coach Kinyemi, I'd be disappointed if he gets anywhere less than 50 points. I mean, he's a super... or. People think he's going to be a superstar in this league. So it's time to show it when it comes to points. And Armia, he's just going to fill out that line. He's a big guy. He's great when it comes to protecting the puck. So that's my third line. And my fourth line, we're going to have Paling, Wheel, and Lekkinen. So Paling had that amazing debut last season. And I kind of wanted to put him higher up in the lineup because he's not a fourth liner. He's not going to project as a fourth liner. He's going to play in the top six. But... He's going to have to earn his spot. And I know that's kind of contradictory because I put Nick Suzuki on the third, on the first line. But when it comes to Paling, I feel like he has more to prove. He's going to have to work his way up. And again, a lot of depth on center. So he's going to be starting on the fourth line. Why don't we move on to the defense? Why don't we? So we're going to have Weber playing right defense. That's no, no duh, right? He's going to be playing with Mete. Now, if the Canadians were to make a move, you know, I wouldn't, you know, if Bergeron goes after 4-4, four forward, that's fine. I really want to see a defenseman. I want to see him make a move for a defenseman because with all due respect to Mete, I think he's good. I think that on a very good team, he plays in the top four, but maybe not in the top two. Maybe not your first line because he's good defensively. He has great speed, but just that offensive output isn't there with Mete. And it's kind of crazy when you think how many consecutive games he's gone without scoring a goal. So um, if there is one projection, though, that I put out there, I do expect Mete to score his first goal this upcoming season. But who knows? We never know. Next up, we have Petrie playing with the newly acquired Chariot. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm sorry. Uh, Jeff Petrie is very underrated. Quite like Philip Deneau, not enough people talk about him. When Weber was injured, and that happens quite a, uh, quite a bit with that foot, um, Petrie stepped in and played great hockey. And I know that sometimes his plus minus doesn't reflect that, but this is one of those key instances where plus minus doesn't mean shit because Petrie has great hockey sense. He has great defense, and he's one of those players who can step up and play in the top four for a limited amount of time. You don't want to see him play there for a whole season, for example, because he's just going to be worn out. When he plays behind Shea Weber, that's usually when he plays his best hockey. And I'm very proud of the uh, acquisition at the time of Jeff Petrie. We only gave up a second round pick, so that's really, really good. He's going to be a key part moving forward. And then rounding up our bottom uh, duo, we got Juleson and Kulak. Kulak, I actually didn't know if I were to play him with Weber instead of Mete. We'll kind of see how the season goes along. Right now, I had him on the third, on the bottom pairing, and he's going to be playing with uh, Juleson. Now, Juleson, when he was drafted, was supposed to be a very good stay-at-home defenseman with uh, great defensive capabilities. It's kind of sucky that his uh, career kind of got derailed by injuries. I say derailed. It's by no means over yet. He can still come back, but uh, it'll, when it comes to Juleson and Weber, the key is to stay healthy. And I don't know why I included this because it's pretty much obvious. But for our goaltenders, we're going to have Carey Price and Kincaid. Again, Carey Price, you want him to stay healthy. I believe he played. Um, he was completely healthy last season. So I don't see why that would be a problem. And when it comes to Kincaid, he's going to be nothing but an upgrade on Antti Niemi. I remember a game last year in the regular season against the Tampa Bay Lightning where the Canadians were playing great. They were firing countless pucks on Vasilev. And the only problem was that Antti Niemi wasn't doing his job. Uh, every shot that the Lightning were putting on him were basically going in. And a lot of those were bad goals. And I remember turning to my dad and saying, remember this game. Because if the Canadians are one or two points away from the playoffs, it's because of this lack of goaltending here. So Kincaid, definitely an upgrade on Niemi. So now, now that we went through the projected lineups, what do I expect from the Canadians in terms of performance? So... I said that I think they're going to get in the vicinity of 98 points, maybe 97. 
um, I know I listened to the hockey guys video where he talks about the Canadians and he basically says it's going to be extremely hard for them to make the playoffs because of how good the East has become. Most notably, he mentioned Florida. He said that Florida is a much improved team. Uh, their biggest uh, flaw was their goaltending, and now they got Sergei Bobrovsky. And then add that to some of their key pieces like Barkov, like Huberdo. So he doesn't see the Canadians at this point being better than the Florida Panthers. And I got to say, I don't know what type of crack he's smoking because let's say, let's, let's be honest here. Anything can happen in hockey, but I don't see the Columbus Blue Jackets making the playoffs. Because, let's face it, they lost Duchesne, they lost Panarin, they lost Bobrovsky. I don't see them making the playoffs, unfortunately, for the Columbus Blue Jackets. That leaves a vacant spot. And that spot is, is going to be between the Buffalo Sabres, the Florida Panthers, and the Montreal Canadiens to fight for. But let's not forget also, can we say with 100% certainty, or, or maybe even 80% certainty, that the Pittsburgh Penguins are going to make the playoffs? That the New York Islanders are going to make the playoffs? that the Carolina Hurricanes are going to make the playoffs. We can't say that with certainty. You know, the year before this past year, uh, going into this past year, only 50% of the teams that were in the playoffs uh, remained this year. So it's really, really unpredictable. I don't think uh, there's any way that Montreal, the Montreal Canadiens can't make a decent push for the playoffs, at least. I might be wrong. You know, they might not make it, but... In my opinion, the team that they have, the work ethic that they have, I don't see why they can't make the second wild card spot. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know. Write in the comments your thoughts. And please like and subscribe to my channel for more Montreal Canadiens news. And as always, my name is Matt, signing off.